Up next, acclaimed Nigerian musician Femi Kuti. Stay with us. Femi Kuti is an acclaimed musician who has followed in the footsteps of his father, the legendary Afrobeat pioneer, Fela Kuti. Femi is currently on a major North American tour, which includes a terrific show, I'm told, here in L.A. at the Hollywood Bowl on Father's Day. His latest CD is called Day by Day, the first studio album in seven years. Femi, nice to have you on the program. Thank you. You doing all right? Yes, yes, thank you. How are things in Lagos? Oh, we still have no electricity, no water in many areas. The government is still spending the oil money like it's their personal property and all that. Yeah. And you're still speaking out against that. Yeah. How difficult is it to... I want to ask a a two-part question here. How difficult is it to live under those conditions, especially for you because you travel around the world, you're regarded and loved around the world, you could live anywhere else in the world, you choose to live in Lagos under these conditions, uh, at least your countrymen live under these conditions, uh, and you support them and, and, and do what you can for them. But how, how difficult a challenge is that for you when you could be living here in L.A., for example? These days it's quite a big challenge these days because of the opportunities I have to stay somewhere like in L.A. and all that. Mm-hmm. It, my work, I think, will be probably easier. I'll be able to work with great musicians all, around the world from Lagos. In Nigeria, it's very difficult. Um, the conditions with no electricity, the poverty level, everybody keeps asking for money. You have to help so many people. That's very difficult. And when you see the riches and you see the poverty level, it's painful. That's very difficult. But then it's, um, it's like my destiny. My father went through it. It would be very sad if I turned my back on my people right now. And I think I console myself with the fact that when I die and I get to heaven and I see people like Marcos Gavi or my father, Kwame Nkrumah, Sankara, I want them to smile and say, well, you didn't turn your back on the struggle. Mm. That's very important to you, huh? Yes, very. Yeah. Um, what do you make of the fact that much of what you are fighting for, much of what you are fighting against, to your point about your very famous father a moment ago, your father was fighting the same fight. What, what, what do you make of that? Years later, you're still fighting the same? I, I was with some friends yesterday in the hotel, and I told them when my father was fighting, we were 13. I'm 46 now. We're closing on 50. And it's sad that after all this time, we're still talking about the same basic facts my father was fighting for, that he was beaten so many times for, went to prison so many times for. We have children in the, uh, their teens, and it's the same story, worse than before. And we... And there's like, there's nothing we can do about it. And it's, that's very, very sad. That's depressing. So where do you find, I know you want to hear them say, well done, that you did a great job when you <laughs> reunite with them again, as you said a moment ago. But that's, that's in the hereafter. Yes. In the here and now, what keeps you fighting every day? Why, what, what keeps you getting up every day? Probably a anger to under, because like when you realize that we were 13 and I'm 46 now. Mm -hmm. And it's the same problem. And the people we have a kind of democratic era right now was the same corrupt system. And to know that this corruption is getting worse. I mean, and you travel, you go to America, you go to Europe, you see they still have the problems, but they have the basic needs for their people. They have electricity, they have water, running water in the bathrooms and all that. And you can't understand why Africa, the richest continent, can provide these things for their people. You see all the highways. You can travel from Florida to Boston to Houston to L.A. I mean, the highways are magnificent, the buildings. Why can't we have all this in Africa? I mean, if I was a leader, I would want, I would be envious of America or Europe. And if I had the means to provide these things for my people, I would do this. So this, these are the things that keep me going, that make me angry and say, and determined to fight asking these questions that why can't you provide this for your people mm. you are you said if you were a leader you are a leader you just lead in a different sort of way um you have your own sort of ministry you're not an elected leader you're not an elected official no, i but, don't want to even go there yep i'm glad you said that i'm, I'm <laughs> going to go there though it, it raises the question as to why um that doesn't interest you because i want to play music i want to i love traveling i love my fans all over the world I love playing in L.A., um, 
San Francisco, New York, Washington, Milwaukee. I love in Paris. I love all these places. If I were a president, then I wouldn't be able to do. And it's a very, very serious job. It's very, I mean, if you look at a country like Nigeria, for instance, you're talking about making 150 million people happy. I mean, that will take your whole life. It will take your family from you. I mean, if you are going to be sincere about cleaning up the country, I mean, you could even, it could weigh you down and even your health could take your health from you because it's so complicated right now. I don't think I could, I don't think I'll be up to doing that mm -hmm. if I were honest with myself. So how then, to use your word again, um, uh, Femi, how do you take that, that anger and turn it into energy? How do you take that anger and, and use it as fuel for your music? That's a very complicated question. I think, I think all I'm doing, I can only put it to a gift from the Creator that gives me the will, the talent, and everything I'm doing. Because sometimes I'm puzzled. Sometimes I say, wow, how did I arrive at where I am today? How does the music come? How do I come with the ideas? I can only believe it's a kind of gospel thing happening. Mm -hmm. What do you make of the fact that you have been gifted in the same way that your father was gifted? I'm not surprised about that because when you read history, yeah. you know that the father, the son always takes after his father in many respects. The child always wants to be like his father from when he's a kid. I've always wanted to be a musician. I've always admired my father. I've always respected him. I never thought anybody's music sounded like his. I thought he was unique. From when I was a kid, I listened to everybody. But his music was always special to me. Yeah. And I think all children are like that with their parents. My son is like that with me. If he turns out to be a musician, I won't be one bit surprised about that either. Mm -hmm. you, you have a son playing with you? Yes. Yeah, he's how old now? He's 13 now. So you played with your dad when you were that same age? I was 16. You were he 16. started much, and because of the, he has a better opportunity than I did. Mm -hmm. I like how to struggle, like how to teach myself the instruments. My father was like, find your way. <laughs> you have to find your way. Yeah. I mean, I probably did that again, thinking about it making, he wanted me to find, see the difficulties of life. Mm -hmm. Because his experience, after all the beatings he got, I mean, like every part of his body was beaten and broken. I mean, so I think maybe the, his experience with the law enforcement in Nigeria made him have a very hard line with his kids, saying, mm -hmm. no, you have to see life in this way. I have had a kind of, of a conventional father mm -hmm. to my son. I make sure he has a very good education. I make sure he can read and write music. I give him all the talent I can, teaching him musical instruments that I know. Those that I don't know, I get teachers to teach him. So he's well, he's well, he has all the weapons he will need if he wants to become a musician. Now, if he wants to become a footballer or into sports or whatever, I'll still be very happy for him, mm -hmm. as long as he's happy. So I'm not as um, hard in that respect as my father. You played how many instruments now? I play one, two, three, about four. About four instruments. Yes. Um, did you ever take your father saying to you, uh, Femi, find your own way, um, as him being difficult with yes, you? Yes, I was very angry. You were angry? Even I, I was very angry one day, at the time I said to play the saxophone, and I said to improvise in his band, one day he calls me, why do you repeat the same thing every night? The same improvisation you repeat, yeah, you talk to me like this. Yeah. You don't teach me how you're telling me. But it was that that got me thinking that I now knew I had to change my improvisation, think of other ways, practice more, and be more dexterous on my instruments. Mm -hmm. So, but then I could, now, out of maturity and age, I can understand that he must have been a very frustrated person. I mean, if we could just even understand the pains he must have been going through, his broken bones that never really healed. He had to perform, he still had to compose the numbers he did, and he had 27 wives, so his life was very complicated. So I could... <laughs> <laughs> you don't have that many wives? No, Yeah. I'm not married right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did you find your own way? How did you create your own sound, distinctly different from that of your father, and develop your own fan following? How, how, how did you just determination, anger. I was very determined. When I left, I was determined to succeed. I said to put like a minimum of 12 hours a day practicing, 
practicing, practicing. And when I practice and when I practice like the saxophone for so many years, I got bored. I moved to the trumpet, moved to the keyboards, and all this I taught myself how to do. Just get the how to play the trumpet, for instance. Mm -hmm. Where are the keys? Blah, 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 and then start to find my way on that. So it's taken me like eight years now to be very comfortable on the trumpet, for instance, mm -hmm. and eight years playing, trying to teach myself the piano and all that. So I'm, I'm like that. I'm very, if I see no hope, I'm very determined to like find a way. I always find a way. It's very stressful. I get very irritated and angry with myself for not being able to succeed. And I just put more effort all the time. I, I could go two days without sleep, just practice. It. Mm. So I think that was because of the kind of life I had in my father's home. Mm. What does music do for you? Everything. Music does everything. I think, I keep saying, I, if I couldn't play music, probably I would, okay, for my children, I would still stay alive if I could. But without, if I couldn't play my horn again, I wouldn't want to live anymore. If I couldn't perform, if I couldn't practice even, maybe mm -hmm. if I couldn't perform, I might not be that sad. Mm -hmm. But if I can wake up every morning and pick up my trumpet and practice my skills, I would be a very sad person. Mm -hmm. And every time I'm like I have a malaria or whatever, and I can't play, I'm so depressed. And everyone say, rest, you have to rest, but I have to play. I'm so into that um, motion of I have to play. It's like eating breakfast now mm -hmm. or lunch. Mm -hmm. I always have to play now. Yeah. who's never heard what you do, never heard what your father does, how would you describe to them what Afrobeat music is? It's music from an African man's perspective, I would say. Now, an African man who grew up, his father, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, was a composer in gospel music. He did all the hymn so songs for, but they were in Yoruba, mm -hmm. my native language. And his father was a composer as well. He composed the national anthem for the state, Abekuta, mm -hmm. where he came. And my father was a pianist for this, for his school. So he had all this as a teenager, and then he went to Trinity College. He had all the traditional music around him, because in Abekuta, where he grew up, it was all about drums and folk songs. So my father had all this, and then he goes to Trinity College to study um, classical music. He gets involved with my this is Gillespie, and he goes crazy for this music. And then he had, he comes back to Nigeria, and there's High Life. He gets involved with High Life. He go, he comes back, then he goes to America, and then he mix, he meets the Black Panthers. He reads about Malcolm X, Marcos Garvey, and he goes completely berserk and says, "Whoa!" And then he takes all the knowledge he has, the music he has, goes back to Nigeria. That's Afrobeat, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why everybody can't do it. <laughs> That's a, whole, that's a whole lot mixed up in there. But thankfully, uh, Femi Kuti can, and he does it awfully well. His latest CD is called Day by Day. Uh, what a legacy uh, you have been bequeathed, and I'm honored to have you on the program. Thank you very much. Femi, it's nice that to have you here. Like you. That's our show for tonight. Catch me on the weekends on PRI, Public Radio International. You can access our radio podcast through our website at pbs.org, and I'll see you back here next time on PBS. Until then, good night from L.A. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep the faith. Thank you.